Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Mechs, episode one, where we're going to explore the performance of mechanical mods, specific ones, and measure their uh, resistance or their voltage drop, but also look at what affects the performance of a mech. Uh, oxidation, the cleanliness, the threading, metal types, contact shapes, and anything else that we find out as a result of the testing we do. Now, if, if you just want to do quick, simple testing, if two mechs, which one hits harder, or two batteries you want to try, or see which atomizer might have higher resistance, or namely affect performance more, check out Jay Hayes' video that he did about three or four weeks ago. J-A-I space H-A-Z-E on YouTube. Did a great video on just how simple it is to measure the voltage at the coils so you can figure out, hey, you know, which battery hits harder, which mech hits harder. Uh, I'm going to be going further than that because I want to be able to eliminate some of the variables that can pop up in testing, especially over long time periods, months, a year, a couple of years, whatever it might be, to continue this mechanical mod testing. Uh, a battery, uh, I can't trust the battery to perform the same next year that it does this year. Also, I want to eliminate uh, coil heating of the atomizer, which heats up the mod, and that can hide... Uh, heating that might be occurring in the mod itself and I also want to eliminate the change in resistance of the coil itself as it gets hotter and the change in voltage of the battery as it discharges during a pulse and in order to do that I'm going to be using this equipment here and I have a really poor drawing that we can go over just a little bit Essentially what I'm going to use are substitutes for the battery and the coil in order to provide more consistency. Our 3.5 volt battery, I'll use 3.5 volts, and sorry for redness you'll see in my arms here. It seems I had a pretty strong reaction to uh, the thermally conductive epoxy I used to uh, connect some resistors up to heat sinks that I'll be using later on in testing. And uh, not pleasant. Um, so I'll use a 60 amp power supply set to 3.5 volts to act as the battery. It's precise voltage, it's not going to change over temperature uh, or vary when I pull current through it, etc. Then that is going to go through the mod or go to the uh, atomizer. Here's the positive post. I shouldn't use that. Here's the positive post. Go down through the mod, come back out, and then go to our coil. Instead of mounting straight across the top, we're going to have it in series with it. And acting as a coil is what's called an electronic load. And this is set to 35 amps. I can set it to act as a resistor, to act like a, uh, drawing a certain amount of power as a regulator mod, or draw a precise amount of current. Now, the advantage of using this as, quote, the coil it, at 35 amps is that I can always draw 35 amps no matter what mod I use here. If I just set it to, say, 0.1 ohms, or I used a 0.1 ohm coil here, or these power resistors, Every time I had a different resistance mod attached, it would change the current flowing through the circuit. And I want to eliminate it as a variable. Because if we know 35 amps is always flowing through this, because that's what I set this to, then I know easily, by measuring the voltage drop here, this many volts with this 35 amps, I can precisely calculate the resistance of the mod every time. Now, measure across the post will be this, a benchtop multimeter measuring the voltage between the posts. So if I have 3.5 volts coming in from our, quote, battery, this power supply, and let's say this 3.1 volts after traveling through the mod and out, then I'll read 0.4 volts on this meter. 0.4 volts at 35 amps, simple Ohm's law, I can know the resistance to the mod. And then using the same atomizer and just unscrewing and screwing different mods into here, I can easily measure repeatedly, precisely, the voltage drop through the mod. Now you might be thinking, uh, but Mooch, <laughs> if we're not using batteries, how are you going to get the current that come in one post, flow through, and come out the other post? Well, that's where these come in. These are solid aluminum slugs, 2700 and an 18650, that I had machined up just for this testing. And what we'll do is, we're going to measure the resistance of these right now, and if we use the same slugs for every test, in every mod, then it doesn't matter what the resistance is because it'll have to be the same resistance for each one. But I want to end up measuring the resistance of this atomizer and we'll measure the resistance, uh, excuse me, the resistance of these right now just so we, if we need to, we can separate those out and eliminate it. So first thing you want to do when measuring anything is make sure when you touch your probes together that it's at zero. And this is close. See if we can get it absolutely to zero. Processing, processing, okay, we're at zero. Now, 
what we'll do is hook this up. And we're at 7.007 milliohms. It's 7 microohms, which is a little less than one third of one thousandth of a volt drop at 35 amps. So that's pretty tiny. And if I can get this hooked up in here. And this one is 9 microamps, 0 0.009 milliohms. So that's a little over one third of one thousandth of a volt drop. So the voltage drop of these two slugs is going to be very tiny compared to the voltage drop we're seeing through here. So we could pretty well discount these, but knowing these resistances, if we want to, we can subtract the resistance of these from the resistance of this and just have the max resistance. But knowing these resistances now, I can also do something like, I know this resistance, I know this resistance, I know the resistance of the mod, I can start taking this bat, this slug and putting it in different adapters, 18650 adapters, and finding out what the performance difference is between these. So there are all kinds of things that can open up that we can do. We can even start testing no ID, dielectric greases, the effect of oxidation, all kinds of things. Once we have a setup that's repeatable with known resistances everywhere, known current levels, no temperature sensitivities, all that leads to all kinds of doors that open up for us to do some really cool testing when we start comparing mods. And that's what we'll be doing in the next video. We'll dive right into testing particular mods. Thank you for watching.